Hi everyone, I'm Surabhi. Welcome to my channel. So now we'll continue with our second set of questions, the remaining five questions which are in my list. And uh, let's start with the number six. So their kids, uh, the parents have told that their kids write from uh, right to left and they read from right to left. So basically what they are telling is that, you know, when you read a book, you read from front to back, right? Uh, you write a letter, you write k, then a, and then t. But when it comes to kids, they write k here, then rather than writing a in front of c, they write a in front of, in back of c, and then t. So basically they write tack, not cat. And I can tell you this thing because my younger one does the same. She does exactly the same. Uh, so yeah, and I also have searched about it uh, a lot because initially when it happened, I was really, really scared that, you know, this basic thing that, you know, you have to, I mean, like, how can someone do it? But then again, uh, what I uh, have learned that again, till, until the age of seven, it's all stabilizing. Their brains is also right, left, everything is stabilizing. And uh, that's pretty normal. It happens to some kids. So uh, what I did or what uh, I can suggest you can do is that you always remind a child, again, building a story that uh, when a mama reads a book to you, she reads from front page, then she goes to next and next and next. She doesn't start reading from the last. So when you are writing a word, you have to go forward. You don't have to come backward. That is a analogy which I use now. Even now, basically, we started two years back when she started actually, you know, uh, we started with reading small, small books or uh, writing small, small words and I realized this problem with her. Even now, um, she, uh, she like, uh, this plus this is 62. So what will she write? She'll write for six and two, she should write in front of six, right? She'll write two in back of six. And then I'll ask her, what did you write? And she'll say, oh, it's 26. I said, yeah, you had to write 62. Then, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then she'll cut the two and write. So um, this didn't happen with my elder one. This is happening with my younger one. And again, the frequency is less. Initially, it was a lot. Uh, but this analogy that, you know, we always move forward. When mama reads a book, we start from the beginning to the end. So we start from the beginning and, you know, move forward. Don't write at the back. If you're writing cat, so she says go at her, but when she is writing, she write go and then A at the back. So I tell you, no, you have to go forward, do not go backward. So that's the analogy I use with her and it's improving. It's improving again, practice and reminding, gentle reminders again and again and hopefully it work for you also. Uh, the next one is, uh, what if you don't have access to the books or language specific books in your country or in your location? Uh, again, it is related to my YouTube channel where I talk about the different books which we have in our library, recommended books uh, and uh, how do we do it. And we also faced this problem, uh, a variation of this problem before lockdown. And during lockdown again, we had this problem because uh, libraries are blocked. We did not have access to library for like three to four months and we are still not going to library. Uh, yeah, we are, it's open, but we are not. So again, basically you don't have access to books. What do you do? So we had one st four strategies. First thing is we do audiobooks. In the sense, uh, so I have not grown up reading Three Little Pigs and Jack and Beanstalk. I have read Hindi books, Champak, Suman Saurabh, Pinky, Chacha Chaudhary, or, uh, you know, Tinali Raman, Akbar Birbal. I have read those kind of stories, mostly in Hindi. I d we did not have access to English books. So, uh, yes, I read all these kind of classic books to my kids. I learned about those ones, but I still wanted my kids to read those stories, those books. And, uh, yeah, I, I did not have, I got some few Hindi books from Amazon India, uh, like two years back, uh, like, uh, very famous Pratham books. We refer to them, but still that's not enough. I wanted, I'm telling you, I want books like Tenali Raman and Akbar Birbal. And, uh, I got few, I got one Akbar Birbal. Yeah, I have, I think, one Akbar Birbal in our library. Uh, but yeah, I didn't have access to. And uh, in Singapore library, we don't have Hindi books. So that's, that's what we moved to, audio stories. Uh, so audio stories, uh, earlier we had Spotify a subscription. Now we have moved to YouTube uh, music. Uh, because uh, we don't use the app like Epic or something. Because uh, my kids are still little. We listen most of the time to fairy uh, tales, you know, all the fairy tales, Cinderella to, uh, 
duckling or whatever fairy tales all the english kind of stories uh, i love you forever all these are uh, available in, in these kind of uh, spotify and youtube uh, music app and we listen the audio version of the books which we could not borrow from library or we don't have but they're famous english books and then uh, like now youtube music has tenali raman in hindi akbar birbal in hindi uh, so we listen to those stories on youtube music and uh, there are like uh, there's this limited set youtube music is not a full fledged app it doesn't have big database as of now so uh, when kids get bored of those stories or those playlist then i play uh, like youtube has all the all the stories everything so then i put them in audio mode like i'll uh, play the youtube on my phone and put it far away so that we can just listen to audio version so that is what for hindi books like we don't have hindi books we don't have uh, books like tanali raman and all even in english so all those books i get in youtube music or spotify or proper youtube uh, we tried listening to harry potter on youtube and we did not like uh, because that's a heavy book you and my kids are still little you know you need a lot of uh, focus for such kind of books maybe that you can use the app or something but yeah uh, till this level of 7 to 8 when we are reading sh- listening to short stories or short books i love you forever interrupting chicken library lion all these books which my kids love we don't have them so we listen to them on youtube or youtube uh, music nowadays and second one which we did was a uh, like the all the f- disney movies frozen frozen 2 despicable me uh my kids uh, have watched these movies but uh they watch it once you know once or twice at the max and uh, they don't understand the movies movies are pretty fast but they uh, the stories i love those stories i love frozen story myself and uh, when we check the books in the store they were pretty expensive here because it's disney books so what we did is we uh, got it online version a pdf version uh you get it uh you get it online or you know take a book and click a photos of it and uh, i mean it's a hard work but yes we did we, my husband took photos of those disney books uh despicable me and all we got the pdf version online it is all available because disney movies are pretty old so apart from frozen i think all other books inside out uh that is a, a movie about emotions then uh, despicable me 1 2 3 then uh, frozen oh yeah these one i got pdf frozen 2 we took photo from the book and uh, we took a print out yes so we have print out of mostly all the disney stories which i like and they have watched the movie so they understand that so that is another way take a print out of the books you get pdf versions very easily on uh, internet you just have to research a, a little but uh, all these are famous books so you get them easily and the third thing which we did was uh, again Mm, uh, when the lockdown happened uh, my girl was in harry potter second last book and she was like into harry potter and then suddenly uh, library lockdown we did not have access to any book and that's what we uh, installed the um, the ebook version of harry potter on ipad and uh, uh, once a week for 2 hours we'll give her ipad to read that book uh, we didn't like it much but yeah she was like already we were dealing with so much in lockdown so that's what we did ipad and uh, we let her read that book and uh, we have a plan that probably when they are like 10 to 11 year old we will move to kindle uh, because i don't think our house will be big enough to considering the amount of books we have already i mean like yeah we will move to kindle that's our plan by the age of 10 or 11 so yeah these are the ways you can download the books online you can take print out you can get audio versions whatever language whatever story whatever it is um, that's all which we do for getting the books which we don't have access to in real life uh you can try any of them that's it next one um it's about homeschooling that uh, how do you get me time so all the mothers who are moving to homeschooling now and it's a unknown territory and especially uh, yeah your kids are already going to school you have one set of routine and now when the kids will be with you all the time it's a very genuine question that how you will get me time and you need me time you know you can't be with your kids all the time you will burn out kids are really demanding uh, so i always tell them and I, the same thing i'll tell you here also that what is your expectations of me time you know um you you have to set some expectations like when your kids go to school they are out from 8 to 3 they are in the school 
so approximately seven to eight hours you will not get seven to eight hours when you homeschool i mean practically not possible even uh, when the kids are little they go to three to four hours and to a preschool a play school you will not get that much of time no have very realistic expectations in homeschool you don't get that much time but yes i have me time because otherwise i would not have been saying you know uh, but yes uh, my expectations of me time changed uh my demands changed my requirements changed but yes uh sometime my me time is that i want to go out and just do window shopping or do shopping myself i want that me time uh, so we did this last year that uh, on sunday morning uh, near about 9 o'clock i will just move out of the house i feed the breakfast to kids get the lunch ready everything or sometime we'll have leftover whatever uh and from 9 to 12 o'clock i'll not come home i'll just go roam around do shopping go to library read my book and my husband will be home so yes that's why i always say that homeschooling you can not do entirely your husband has to be on board because you will need the support you can't do it alone it's not about educating and just doing the curriculum or syllabus it's not about that you need a lot of mental support so yeah we did that from sunday 9 to like 12 i will be out of house uh and my husband has to take care of them uh he used to go take them swimming sometimes take them skating sometimes they'll just play at home uh so we don't do screens so yeah it was demanding on my husband also but then he understood that i need a break because whole of the week i will be completely with kids so that is one kind of me time then another kind of me time that i want to stay at home and you know get some work done because when kids are around there are many things uh, i mean i don't have a helper here so everything i have to do so i just like you know take the kids out of this house for 2 hours i need to get some things done i have to rearrange my almira i have to you know just lie down and take rest or clean up something which i'm using chemicals or just i want to have some peace can you take the kids out of this house for 2 hours again it was my husband who has to support me so uh, yeah so sometimes he'll do in the evening that uh, i mean that's what uh, things kept changing so last year we did this also that uh, in the evening they used to go to park so rather than me going with my kids to park i'll send him so he'll come from office he'll just put the bag uh, get fresh and then go take his phone and you know go to the park you have to sit there you don't have to play with kids but you have to keep a watch on them so like that in the evening from uh, 6 to 8 he will be outside uh, he'll be with friends or something or sometimes just by browsing but yeah two hours i'll have all the home to myself peacefully sometime one hour and a half hour uh, you have to be realistic you know what works for you how much energy your husband has i mean he also come from office but yeah it worked for some time because that that's what i wanted i want some peace time in the evening every single day and sometime not every single day also sometime we divided okay three days a week i can go to park with kids uh rest of the time you go with them uh, i also want rest when i come from office done doesn't tell you to work out but this is kind of me time and uh, yeah what what else me time yeah in the day time uh, in during the lockdown time it was like we were all the time at home all the time it was like really really bad and uh, it was so much of work there was everything to be done everything house has to be cleaned again and again and again cooking all the meals so i wanted to have nap uh i usually don't nap my kids don't nap but it was like i told my husband he was also working from home so i like uh, from 2 to 4 o'clock or 2:30 to 4 after lunch for one and a half hour i want quiet in the sense i don't want my kids to come to me and you know mama 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 uh for one and a half you'll take responsibility of them so in this is i would sleep kids will not come and disturb him because i told kids that you know mama needs rest so they will be playing themselves in the room or listening to audio books but if in case in case they need some help they have an argument they have a fight i mean they are two kids they will be fighting so they do not come and disturb me my husband will be taking care of them so that was also my me time that one and a half hour it's my quiet time mama will not talk to anyone so yeah i used to take nap i used to browse uh, on phone i used to talk to my mother because that is also my me time that i can peacefully talk to my mom uh, so yeah so re- set your realistic expectations and communicate that to your husband that you know i want this many minutes or this many hours in a week uh, to be with myself or you can change it every month but that's how uh, i work out my sanity i call it sanity time not me time <laughs> no, it's not me time you are still doing something but yes let's keep it there okay uh, this is one very important question someone asked me that 
why don't you see my kids doing the busy books uh, so basically when i do uh, even a day in a life or something i really show my kids doing busy books or doing school work as such much because uh, my kids are pretty little they don't have that much attention span we don't do screens so they are not used to screens i mean if they see my phone on they get very excited that oh mama is going to shoot us and everything uh, because uh, when we do school or otherwise also i uh, do not use screens much in front of them so they are not used to it uh, and more of it are busy books i'm teaching them so when i'm teaching them i cannot shoot uh, I mean, it doesn't work out. I tried some time, but it doesn't work out because you know one kid will be jumping here, one could be here, and you know not getting a concept. Then in between we'll get up, get one manipulative. It's not working. Okay, let me try this thing. So in a way, that video doesn't make any sense to you because it's all here and there. Teaching is happening. It's not like classroom. I'm standing and showing them. I'm sitting with them, trying different manipulatives, playing different games, on the spot games, and uh, kids are doing tantrums. Uh, sometimes they want to change pencil. practically it's not it's not worth it to even shoot because you will not see our faces <laughs> you will not see what we are talking we'll be just just doing it but uh, so i don't shoot while kids are doing school work because they are not big enough uh, to focus on the uh, on the schooling when the camera is on uh, they are not used to it and uh, the last question is uh, what happens between busy books i mean like how do i teach them the concepts and everything so uh, now this is a very comprehensive question what happens between busy books is real life that's what i say what you see in busy books is what they already know uh, in real life what i have already talked to them which we have practiced it orally or maybe some written way somewhere and now busy books through busy books i'm testing how much do they remember did they get the concept and practice you know like you do workbooks for practice we do busy book for practice you can understand like that for example uh when you see about money matters so i studied money matters basically because my younger one loves to deal with real money she doesn't doesn't like numbers she doesn't like maths she doesn't like studying as such if you say but she likes real money a lot and very much uh it applies to my elder one also that she loves playing with the real money they have a piggy bank whatever coin they find around the house they will put in that piggy bank and they're just very proud of they have a money and everything that's their feeling so all the money matter questions i have taught them using this example uh because they get all the coins around papa's wallet which are out um just this coins so we used to play a game that mama has notes you want to exchange with mama Okay, I have a two dollar note. If you give me two dollar coins correctly, I'll give you two dollar note. If you do not give me correctly, then I'll take your two dollars. But uh, I mean, like I'll take your coins, but I'll not give you the note. So they will count again and again all the cents they have to make sure that they get two dollar coins, and then they will exchange. So that's how my kids learned. counting that 50 and 50 cents make $1 10 20 or like 10 10 5 cents make 50 cents or uh, 5 plus 5 make 10 because it was like they wanted note from me because they don't get notes they only get coins around so that's how we learned counting money then uh, real life in the sense that uh, like we go out uh, so make uh, outside mcdonalds we have our bakery and uh, this we did last weekend also so there we get croissant box which is 4 dollars so i gave my daughter 10 dollars and i told that you know uh, you have to go buy one packet of croissant so you have to tell me how much money you will get back she did on her fingers and she told 6 okay then her father shot it okay if we want two packets of croissants how much money you will get back she again did the calculation because if she does the calculation correct she will get the power to take the dollars and buy the things herself i'll not go with her i'll be watching her but i will not go with her and this is a lot of power to a 5 year old uh, yeah it's a lot of power to her and she will focus and she will answer all our questions so basically in 10 minutes me and my husband will doing 
uh, this money addition subtraction with her uh, like uh, okay if you want three coins how much more money should mama give it to you and then she'll try to calculate it and she has to make it correctly because if she does single mistake she will lose the power to go to the bakery so yes we do these kind of things with our kids uh, then uh, what else we do yes oh uh, yeah when uh, i uh, we don't give them junk so freely but like i have a lot of candies in our fridge big chocolates and all so this also game we play that uh, i take the stuff out and i every candy is like this 5 cent this candy is 1 cent okay how many uh, money you have in your piggy bank and then we'll get it out okay so which all do you want and do you think you have enough money can you buy for me so we do pretend buy thing selling thing in our home so you see if you see my money matters busy book it's all that all that we have done at home we have done in our real life when we go out we do all this and then i give them busy book which is a little more complicated but they get the idea what we want them to do and uh, basically what is in the busy book they know that this is related to real life and they want to learn it they want to do it because then they get the power that you know one day we will go and buy ourselves this time i'm going to buy a croissant maybe next time mama will go and tell me to buy bananas myself going to the big grocery store by myself so you know they have a motivation to do it and they learn it because we are doing like those things so that is given example of money matters uh, another thing is uh, uh, reading about uh, knowing about this uh, history or you know stories i mean we listen to a lot of audio stories uh, we listen to tenali raman we listen to rebel uh, story for girls we listen to the big life podcast and we listen to lot of stuff which my kids are not exposed to usually like for example uh, last week we were listening to rebel life rebel girls uh, that story and there they heard that you know a girl, that lady was a mother at the age give birth to a baby at the age of 17 and my elder one asked mama but you said that you know we become adult only in 18 then only we get married and that all discussion led to how was the older times i told them you know that your granny uh, in the granny's time girls were not allowed to study uh, your mother had these struggles when she was growing up because she was a woman and your great granny did not study at all but there was no schools and uh, my granny got married at the age of 10 and we have they have kids your grandpa was born when their mama was 14 we talked about all of those stuff which are uh, which otherwise we would not talked about and these all things are part of you can say history social studies or anything so when she reads some books of social studies or when uh, my next time my husband talks about world war sometimes they would talk about the india pakistan war everything they try to listen to it and they relate to the stories what they are listening and then they ask questions and we try to explain whatever we understand whatever we think is okay with them so these all understanding of uh, subjects or life happens in between because of the audio books uh, mainly because of the audio books or audio stories or whatever they listen you know that is one thing that's very important uh, in our life which i feel that uh, my kids know lot of stuff just because they listen to it and we discuss about it and then third thing is uh, about writing so again we do writing only copy work once a week that to now from last 2 3 months before that we did not do but we do lot of writing here and there uh, like my girl had the birthday so she want because of covid we could not have any celebrations or anything anyways we did not have but yeah now they have so many friends and they are like you know big girls so they wanted to celebrate with their friends so i said okay i can uh, we can do return gifts to all your friends and uh, you know just to tell them they happy birthday and everything i want the list of all your friends because that my number of gift i'm making so they gave they prepared list for like one week and there was like one list then one girl uh, and they have 16 finally start from five girls they gave me a list of five girls to, uh, today okay you have only five friends fine no mom of you forgot so next day they make 10 then finally after one week i got a final list that had 16 names in it and i told them don't tell me verbally i don't remember your friends i want the list so for one week they were trying to write the names of their 16 friends sometimes asking spellings from me sometimes just making their spellings and uh, then in between they have added it has a she has a brother a sister everything so you know those kind of fun writing we do then i asked them to write that uh, if we had a fight we had a argument or uh, so they write letters to me uh they write diary in the diary also they write messages to me oh, mama i'm sorry mama this and that so 
they write like that and then uh, we write on the boards we write messages for each other we write thoughts for each other sometimes i want to say and yeah copy work is the uh, one thing we do writing uh, so that all goes in between uh, the proper you know alphabets and language arts or something this all chutu chutu activities we do at home for writing and uh, yeah about science uh, one subject is science uh, science we do mainly through books uh, we have lots of uh, science magazines in singapore we have young scientist kind of you know comics kind of science magazine and that has a lot of experiments in it very simple child like a uh, level 1 level 2 experiments so my elder one reads them she asked me that i want to do this experiment with you so okay usually those are simple so we do them then i have a small garden where we germinate different plants we study about different leaves uh, you know this, this is how we, i try to germinate everything possible uh, anything which is in my kitchen from garlic to this one this doesn't work this worked we tried sunflower seeds we tried papaya seeds and then i see see look at the trunk of it and look at the uh, this is a creeper see this leaf is this structure when it's small it's this structure so all those things which we see around we don't do any written work for that but yeah these are the science things and then some plants die in one balcony we have to put to other balcony why because there is no sunlight you know all these practical life things we do between the busy books and yeah we have a school routine uh, what we do in each day uh, that i'll cover in some other video uh, but yeah that's uh, that's all we do all learning we do in between uh, for arts and everything that is uh, i mean like it happens on the way i have everything in excess uh, in i mean their excess they can do painting they can do drawing they make cards for their friends lot of cards lot of every day they will take some letters to your friends draw something and take it and uh, sometimes i draw i sit with them i i have also have a drawing book so sometimes i i have time and i have energy i draw different things like i'm not an artist but like how do you draw a house how do you draw a sunflower what i have i have learned that there is a river going through whatever basic drawing i know so they sit with me and do drawing there so yeah that's all that's all the subjects we do writing our uh, numbers numbers maths calculation just just with money matters we do everything addition subtraction division division like uh, okay it has six croissants so uh, we four people are there how will we divide okay mama will have only one papa will have only one rest how many left can you divide among you two so we do all these real kind of stuff teaching maths uh, so in the busy books is only the toughest or uh, the practice part that's it you see just all happens in real life so that's all we do we don't have any curriculum as such for any subject it's just these things which you see around so that's it i i hope i answered this question so uh, thank you for being here uh, any more questions you can ask me i'll be happy to help you and uh, thanks for subscribing and like and share and bye bye